Okay, good morning. Time for us to get started this morning. Welcome to the Story of God. Excited to be here with you on this beautiful Tuesday morning. A little cold outside. We'll get started in just a moment. Story of God Morning Devotion with David and Kara. My name is David. I'm Kara. And we're working our way through the Bible one chapter at a time. Today we're going to be at Job chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Getting serious. By the way, I just want to mention real quick if you are looking for a <laughs> CD for some prayer time or devotion time, you need to look no further than uh, this, <clears throat> this yeah. uh, album right here. Uh, called, uh, oh shoot, what's it called? Fragrance. Is it Fragrance? Is that the name of it? Yeah, that, there it is. Fragrance by Brad Jackson. It's actually by JXN Ministries. Uh, and uh, just a fantastic uh, album to pray to, to do devotions to, that kind of so, thing. Uh, mitigate the chaos in your car. Uh, ride, ride and some peaceful, prayerful. Yes time there yes definitely <laughs> um and uh we know that uh, the jacksons and are just such anointed people and uh anointed to uh to bring god's peace and man when they worship they really uh, good morning pastor roger yeah good morning good morning so anyway so pick up that album you can do so uh on their facebook page you can find the links uh, on their facebook page jxn ministries so um yeah, go there. Yeah. Good. All right, let's jump into it this morning. All right. Jump into the the book of Job, chapter eight, and uh, we're gonna do this thing. All we're right. Do it. Good morning, Tiffany. <clears throat> Good to Good see you. Good morning, Mrs. Juicy. All right. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, "How long will you say such things?" Okay, so Job uh, spoke up in in chapters six and seven. Mm -hmm. And um, Bildad mm -hmm. is now rebutting what he's having to say. Interestingly enough, some um, some believe that Bildad is a descendant of Abraham through his um, uh, servant Keturah. Oh. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so some people think this is a significant um, appearance here that uh, that Abraham would be. I guess reappearing in Scripture through his son Keturah, but I don't through through his um, son Keturah's son. Yes, I, but anyway, um, yeah. I just thought I'd give you that little piece of information. A little nugget <coughs> is that uh, is that in the um, is that in the midrash that it's uh, that it pulls that up? Uh, is that is that Jewish history? No, it's the lineage according to. Um, um, but he's built at the Shuhite, which leads him to being... Keturah was a Shuhite <clears throat> as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> um, Shua, he would be a descendant of Shua, okay. which is Abraham's son. Okay, all right. Well, there you go. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so Shua... So I don't know that that's necessarily significant to his presence here in this book, except to say that... Um, that God uses formative people in formative ways. Um, and sometimes being used formatively, um, can, I don't mean to be, um, repetitive, but <clears throat> it can be forming for us as well. Yes. Um, and if you want to be a formative person, if you want to be someone that God really uses as, um, as a cornerstone like person, yeah. Jesus was the cornerstone. He also laid his life down 
as the foundation. This is true. Um, and so, you know, Job, Job's story is definitely a corner, a, a, not saying capital C cornerstone, but it is a formative kind of story to our faith. Right. Knowing that amidst every piece of trouble and every accusation, you know, by our friends, um, every misunderstanding um, by those who would look onto our life, every um, onslaught of the enemy, God is faithful and he's constant. And he is not the author of bad things and, and right. um, evil and right. harm and hurt. And right. however, he is able to use them to very tidily weave it all together for his glory, number one, yeah. and for our good. Yes, definitely. Now that would put it, that would put uh, this chapter uh, outside of the pre-flood timeline um, that we have spoken about before. Right. Uh, but okay, <laughs> there's lots of archaeology in the scripture that you kind of scratch your head, going, "Okay, well, where does that fit?" Right. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying he is. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say that. I, I wasn't saying that you were. I'm just saying. I understand um, some people believe it. Yeah, there are there are definite times in the Bible where you look and you go, I don't know exactly where this fits, but I know that it fits. Okay, so there was a there was a uh, um, I can call him a theologian. He since has gone off the deep end, but but uh, he 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 said he used to be theologically inclined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he um, he said something to me once, and I and man, it was uh, mm. it was so impactful to me when reading the scripture because i used to have all these questions about the scripture you know i'd i'd read and sometimes there were archaeological questions that i had you know why why did it say that this city was here when it was actually there i was kind of a nerd as a kid and uh and i remember hearing him say um you have to trust that the bible that god wanted you to have the word of god that the lord wanted you to have and the pieces of it that he wanted you to find and put together um, you have to trust that 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 is part of his progressive revelation to right. you. In other words, you have to just kind of have faith that what you are hearing from God from this word and also his spirit, because remember the 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 word is just is just a, a book <coughs> unless the spirit of right. God uh, brings those things alive in you. And so so you have to trust that the word of God that you have right now, is the word that ultimately God desires Amen. for you to have. And the words that he brings alive to you by his spirit are ultimately those that he wants you to uh, right. to, to see. Good Every morning, Every other part of kingdom Tarina. living requires faith. Yeah. So should the reading of, the God's, reading word. of God's word yeah. also elicit faith, and it does require faith from it. Require face. faces. That, it requires faces from us, yeah. too. All right. Uh, verse 2, how long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. But if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, good morning, Tarina and Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. Even now, he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your rightful place. Your beginnings will seem hopeful. So prosperous will your future be. Okay. Now, while he's saying yeah. very right things. Yes. He's saying very right very things. Truthful when, we are, things. when we wander afar off from God, when we are in error, when we sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we get on his plan. Yeah. Right? Right. We must repent. Yes. But, but remember also a word rightly spoken um, is necessary. Um, go ahead. You were going to say something. No, 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 no. I, I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah, Bill, that's saying all the right things right here. He's saying, yeah, you got to be, you got to be humble and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. I think there is this. <laughs> um, we, we as the people of God, we kind of skate between two lines, don't we? Um, we don't want to assume that something. You never want to assume that something that somebody is going through is, is uh, and we've spoken at the, about this before, is their fault. <laughs> the, scripture <tells> that, <coughs> the scripture tells us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Um, what that means is this, ultimately... I'm looking that, up a verse. I'm not... Yeah. Uh, what that means is, is that we... Um, <laughs> 
that that sometimes bad stuff happens to good people, blameless people, even. Um, you look at Elizabeth in the scripture. Uh, this is uh, uh, Jesus's cousin, right? Mother of John. She was barren um, at the uh, at the time that ultimately that God was saying a child to come through your your wife Zechariah, and um, and in that um, ultimately the Lord showed His goodness, His kindness, His creative power through Elizabeth in that moment. And I believe that that was the testimony that ultimately the Lord desired to bring through Elizabeth. <coughs> um, sometimes, sometimes it's not your fault, uh, the stuff that you're currently going through. Sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with sin. <coughs> sometimes it is just that way because the Lord desires to use a moment in the, uh, in your life in order to bring about creative power, um, to bring about the miraculous. And so, so uh, I know people who are saying, I, 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 there's this couple, I love them so, so desperately. And they keep saying, well, uh, you know, we've gone to deliverance for this thing over and over and over and over again. Um, and we just can't seem to shake it. Um, and, and my words to them are very practical. Why? Well, because, because sometimes it doesn't have a thing to do about a curse on your life. Sometimes it has a thing to do about how, you know, how you are able to tackle, um, love and, and, and God is, God's telling you you need to you need to uh, uh, to to be formed in your character in this moment. And in yes. fact, just recently uh, uh, um, on a Sunday morning, Jennifer Jordan uh, at Masterwork spoke about this exact thing. She said that the <laughs> thing that the Lord desires to form and fashion you in is ultimately the thing that sometimes you get so upset about about that you feel uncomfortable in your life or in somebody else's life. It's the about. place where the nature of God within you yes. is is the weakest. Yes. And so, you know, we can we can look at <clears throat> Bill Dad's being pretty judgmental right here. And we don't want to return Bill Dad's judgment for judgment, mm -hmm. but we do want to be discerning because we now thank thank the Lord we do now have the whole counsel of God's word. And so, you know, we see we see the pattern we, we, we read the whole book. Bill yeah. Dad didn't have the benefit of sitting right. down and <clears throat> reading the whole book and then giving his <clears throat> his advice. Yeah. But on the same hand, he did, you know, he, he, he on, the, on the other hand, he did speak up and participate and gave, <clears throat> he gave it his best go. Yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is even Paul didn't. Paul says, I don't even judge myself. That's, right. That's, that's for God to do. Um, I got to leave that to God because um, he'll he'll judge the quick and the dead. Yes. Um, and and I think um, I used to love that verse as a kid. I thought it was so funny. The quick and the, the dead. The quick and the dead. That means I'm quick. Yes. <laughs> if you ain't dead, you're supposed to be quick. I know some people who are dead before they're dead. You know what I mean? They're not uh, quick. <laughs> they're not quick. <laughs> <coughs> Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of us tend to jump to Bildad before we do the whole seven days of sitting and crying with our friends. Um, the scripture very clearly, the scripture very clearly tells us to weep with those who weep, to mourn with those who mourn, to laugh with those who laugh. In fact, the Proverbs tell us very strongly not to laugh while people are mourning. That's exactly what I was looking at. Yeah. <coughs> no, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but... go ahead. Also, another proverb that I want to bring to light. Um, is the one that I just mentioned, Proverbs 25, 11 says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. They're priceless words fitly spoken. Ooh. So <clears throat> in that- Apples <clears throat> of gold. In settings of silver. I was looking up the word apple because I, I know- use some gold apples. <clears throat> I want real ones. I, 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 I like, I'll I mean- I'll take the gold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I want to eat the real ones though. Okay, but here's yeah, the deal. gold ones would not digest well. Sorry, no. <laughs> but here's the deal. What's the opposite? What What are words unfitly spoken? What are careless words? Yeah. And more than just, um, more than just in counsel, but in our, you know, when we sit down and I'm going to really counsel this person and help this person. But as we as believers have the opportunity, like Bill did this year, did right here with Job, we as believers have the opportunity every day to go into our sphere of influence. And to share apples of gold in yeah. settings of silver. Yeah. We have the opportunity to go in and give words fitly spoken. But what happens if we don't? Careless words. What are they like? 
careless. I think the careless words are the blustering wind. Yes. And while Job is <clears throat> Job is saying careless words just as much as Bildad the Shuhite is, we have the opportunity. We Jesus says that we are the light of the world. Yeah. Jesus says we are the salt of the earth. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus says. Because Jesus is the hope of the world, we are the hope of the world. Yes. And so we get to go into our everyday life, into our <clears throat> nine to five, into the grocery store with that same checkout lady that we always see, into the post office, everywhere we go. And we get to have a word fitly spoken to them. Jesus says, don't worry. He said to his disciples, don't worry what you'll say, but when the time comes, your ho the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly what to say. If you and listen. <laughs> there's a subtext to that scripture. Okay. <laughs> but there's there's always our part in participation right? with the yes. scripture. Yes. There's always our part. Yes. We always have to do our part. <clears throat> However, we get that privilege now. Bill that the Shuhai didn't have the spirit of the living God walking with him and breathing breath into his lungs, but we get that. And so when we read this, we have the opportunity to to redeem every moment that we stand in with others, yes. even with believers. We get the opportunity to redeem every moment that we interact with others. Yeah, so that's good. It's good. It reminds me of it all. Um, you you said uh, careless words. It reminds me of the old song of the church, uh, uh, "Careless Whispers" by uh, by Saint George. If you haven't had a chance to, just you gotta be careful. Great saxophone. Solo on that song. Um, okay. Um, yeah. And Stephanie said. Not a, as a musician, that is a <laughs> poor excuse for a good melody. Um, uh, Stephanie says, uh, sometimes the hard we deal with is to prepare us for what God has called us to do. Um, that, you know, that's, that, that's true. I think there mm -hmm. is in there. Let me And let me just say this. There is the idea <coughs> that, that God puts us through difficulty. Um, that's that's sort of a oh, okay okay all right um, okay let, let me can I clear up those lines real quick yeah I was just reading the comments God tests us God tests us the enemy tempts us God allows us to walk through situations always with <laughs> our best in mind and fruitfulness and and blessing on the other side of things so Sunday night somebody spoke over us. Somebody prophesied over us because we've been going through a season of
distancing to him because what, what we're being is we're, we're being distant children. Uh, I don't know how, what kind of relationship you had with your parents, but ultimately the Lord desires to protect. The Lord desires to grow. The Lord desires to bless. The Lord desires to bring you into a full understanding of who he is. And these are the things that drives all of his actions and his outreach towards you. Um, I love the painting by, uh, was it Michelangelo painted the finger of God? Uh, the, the hand of God. The hand of God. Where God and Adam's hand meet. Yeah. It's Michelangelo. It's in the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, okay. I already was Michelangelo. So um, That's my 12th grade humanities paying <laughs> off right there. But you see in that picture, <laughs> God is, is, is reaching with all his might to touch Adam. He is, he, and, and this is the Lord, the God, the creator of the universe this from the, the heavens. ancient of days painted with a, with a snowy white beard right? and snowy white hair. And he is reaching out to touch Adam and Adam is barely like lifting his hand to touch God. Man, that's such a strong picture of, of the way sometimes that, that we operate with God. Sometimes we are not sure. Sometimes we hold back. Because we don't know how good God is. But God desires, he's reaching out for us to bless us, to move us, to grow us, to make us strong. This is the, this is the focus of God. Okay, Amen. we should probably get back Verse to Verse 16, scripture. he is like a well-watered plant in the sunshine. Spreading its roots over the garden, it entwines its roots around a pile of rocks and looks for a place among the stones. But when it's torn from its pot, the place disowns it and says, I never saw you. I don't want to be a believer whose life is, who who has made no demarcation. Yeah. When I'm gone. Who gets ripped up by the roots and, and the ground doesn't even And remember. the ground doesn't even recognize that you're missing. Oof. Um, le yes. Yeah. That, I'm going to just let the Holy Spirit handle that one. <coughs> verse, verse 19. Surely its life withers away and from the soil uh, other plants grow. Hmm. Surely God does not reject a blameless man or strengthen the hands of evildoers. Amen. God is not guilty of strengthening an evil man. Yeah. Um, verse 21. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Praise man, the Lord. That's it. That's it right there. That, that yeah. ultimately uh, that the Lord desires that we live in that victory. Right, this is the victory that God ultimately brings. The victory that yes. that the Lord, so that so that we, so that our enemies would be put to shame, and ultimately we would be exalted. Now, what does that mean in our modern context? Because our enemies are not actual human beings, right? We don't wrestle against anything that bleeds, right? Flesh and blood. Um, but that, <coughs> uh, but that ultimately the enemy of our souls would be put to shame. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's a whole other there's yeah, a whole other know. five I or was, six layers to I, know, that. I was working through that in my mind yeah there's a whole other five or six layers <laughs> because you know then you have to jump into revelation well who are the enemies of god well ultimately those that anyway um but uh but as of this current time during this this kingdom age that we are currently in uh ultimately um remember that your enemies are not clothed in flesh and blood your enemies are that uh, uh, principalities and uh, rulers um, and those those spiritual beings who have taken up authorities in cities that are not under the submission of Christ. Remember that they are against you, that they desire, just as, as Bill Dad was talking about, they desire to rip you up by the roots. Mm. Um, but if we if we plant ourselves in the Lord, the Lord creates a shield round about us. The Lord is the um, is the 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 um, oh, what are the they psalmist called? says, "You, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head." Yeah, but there's a there's another one, uh, the uh, strong tower, right? Yeah, David yeah. also calls him a strong tower that the righteous run into it, right? Amen. The, the righteous live within God's strong tower, and they are saved. And uh, this morning, I just I hear the words of Bill Dad saying, um, "Run into the Lord." You know, I, I want to talk about that for just a second. The the um, so my mind goes back to a dream that okay. you had three years ago, four years ago, about the uh, the the stones in your in your thigh, the place of the covenant. Yeah, that were removed. <clears throat> you know, those that that those things that were taken away 
that that so Kara had a dream, uh, and in this dream there were stones that were set in her thigh, right? Um, the thigh, the and it was like <clears throat> they were in a setting like they would have been in the ephod. They were in a gold setting, and they they were, um, and the it was placed in um in hebrew cultures the significance of the back of the thigh yeah. is the place of the covenant right so um um this is why god is seated um god is seated in the place of covenant god's immovable in his covenants yeah. with us, right yes um <clears throat> but um mm -hmm. but anyway they, they, i had a dream and it was a it was a very extensive dream but just a portion of the dream is that um, the Lord was showing me that the place of the covenant, um, there, there will be a, a, a tearing away from the flesh in my, in my dream. It was the, this, <clears throat> this small sized ephod like piece was on the back of my thigh and it was ripped away. And he was, it, it was a dream about the church, about the body, about yeah. the ecclesia, the yeah. body of believers and church, um, church whole capital C. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and so he was showing me that there was a time when, um, the covenants of God and when the covenants of God and the people of God would be torn away from the rest of the body. And he was causing me to mourn and to grieve for the condition of the body, because not everybody who belongs to the body, bear with me, not everyone who belongs to the body is in covenant with God. Yeah. And so the Lord was saying, I will take my remnant and I will take those who are in covenant with me and I will tear them away from the body. Yeah. And in my dream, it was torn away <clears throat> from the back of my thigh. And there was a situation, there was a rapture like situation in my dream right. and the rest of the body was left and there was a gaping open wound in the back of my leg. Yeah. And it, it, it um, didn't hurt the rest of my body that was left because I, I, it was never really assimilated into me, but there was still this gaping hole left. The Lord, he was breaking my heart for the church is what he was doing. Right. And go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, um, <clears throat> I think asking yourself the question and we've asked ourselves this question at Masterwork. It was a the dream sounds strange out of context. No, 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 no. no. Out of, anyway, I don't think so. Um, if you do, you can always, ask us questions uh but uh but um the, we asked ourselves the question at masterwork and we continue to ask ourselves this question i think it's a very healthy question to ask and maybe a very healthy question for you to ask too if you left right now if you were gone if if you were taken uh, like like a, a plant that's uprooted if you were taken out of the soil would you be missed mm. Mm. would the would the and not you not not your personhood of course your personhood would be missed right you, i would you miss mean you. would be be missing from would, the kingdom right would your kingdom <clears throat> impact be missed you know we we see these these people go on to glory like like billy graham and and uh and uh, uh, other evangelists that i know that that have moved on that had big kingdom impact and when they leave they leave not a hole, but they leave a space for somebody to step into. When Elijah right. left, um, he left a space for Elisha to step into. Right. When you leave, <clears throat> do you create an impact? Is is there is there a place where you go? Um, is there a spot where you where where you were that someone has to come in and fill? Because it, it created such an impact within the kingdom. I think that's a really healthy question to ask. Um, and, and it's a question that, that can sometimes bring on shame. It shouldn't. Don't let the enemy get that, get that foothold. Right. But, but what it can bring in is a healthy concept of being, uh, of understanding that the Lord desires for us to have an impact in the world around us. Um, for us to have kingdom Im impact, where for our roots to grow deep. So that if we were plucked up, right? Yes. That ultimately that there would be uh, there would be a space there that would beckon others to come and fill it. That would beckon to others to come and fill it. Yes. So I think that's something that Bill Dead was talking about. He said he was saying your roots are are short, right? Mm -hmm. Your roots are not deep. 
And uh, sometimes mm. I think we got to grow right in order to to increase our our kingdom impact with yeah. those around us. Yeah. If you were taken out from the world, would uh, would you be missing any uh, kingdom impact? That's it. That's exactly it, Delane. Uh, Stephanie says, do you mean a physical space or a spiritual space? Both. Both. Either. I'd say both. I mean, Elisha was both of those, right? The reality is um, uh, they, they missed the prophet of God. When Elijah was gone, they were like, well, who's the prophet that's going to step into place? Oh, Elisha. Elisha has been there to learn. Elisha has moved along with. Um, but with physical space, I mean, of course, people are going to miss you. You're going to have family that misses you. You're going to have friends that miss you, that miss your presence. But do they miss his presence? Coming from you. Through you <clears throat> is the question. And so those do are... Do they miss your ministry, I'm doing? Yeah. Do they, do they miss the ministry that came from you? You know, and, and sometimes it's like the Batman complex. And I, I know that's a weird statement, but uh, I still remember I watched the other night um, The Dark Knight with, uh, with Isaiah. And, uh, and at it, just the very end of it... Um, <laughs> She's like, you let my kid watch it? No, it's just at the very end. But he picked up on something that Batman said. Uh, Batman says, I may not be the hero that Gotham wants, but I may be the hero that Gotham needs. There are certain people that sometimes rub you the wrong way that may have spiritual impact that you need that you may not want. And so people missing you physically is different than people missing you spiritually sometimes. But the reality is, is that, yes, ultimately our kingdom impact um uh is important good you ready to pray yes good yes let's pray father we thank you um for your presence yes god, you <clears throat> activate your yeah. word to us thank you Jesus. god as we as we dig into your word father your holy spirit's able to make it come alive yeah in our lives and father i pray today god that you would make your word come alive in us Ooh. yes make your word come alive in me <laughs> father i pray that all of the dead places God would be filled up with the life of your word. Yeah. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would reinvigorate um, all of the word, God, that we have placed down in our hearts. Sure, sure. Father, I pray that today you would begin a reinvigorating process of those of those words, of that word that we yeah. have placed in our in our heart and in our life, yeah. in our minds. Yeah. God, begin to renew. Father, those words that you've spoken to us yeah, through, your, through your holy word. And God, I just pray today, God, that you would make us into your image. Father, I pray, God, that, that our lives would be a reflection of your glory. Father, of who you are, God. Of, I pray, God, that every area of our life would come in conformity with your word. Yeah. I pray in the name of Jesus yeah. that you would reveal to us, Father, the error, the, the, the areas of error. And yeah. God, I pray that you would help us by your Holy Spirit yes. to line them up with your word. Yeah, yeah. Father, we want to be found in you. God, we want to put all our trust and all our hope yeah. in you. Father, we don't trust the systems of the world. We don't trust the, um, we, you know, the, the world would, would want to make us <laughs> short in root, uh, make us nice and pretty and, and fruitful sometimes mm -hmm. on the outside, but Lord, not very fruitful when you look at the root. Uh, system underneath. God, yeah. help us to be deeply rooted in you. Help yes. us to be deeply rooted in you. Father, that we would not be outside of your blessings, that we would not be outside of your spirit's purpose, yes. but God, that we would be deeply and firmly set in the purpose of your spirit, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yes. thank you, Lord. Yes. And Father, we praise you, God, that you will yet fill us. Yeah. Uh, we, that you will yet fill our mouth with life. Yeah. God, I praise you that you don't reject the blameless, Father, that your strength is not on the hands of the evildoer, but against yes. them. Father, I thank you, God, that when we run into you, Father, that when the righteous run into you, we are saved. Yeah. And so, Father, I thank you that through your son, Jesus, you are able to keep us yes. and to walk us into the land of our promise. <laughs> Father, I just praise you, God, that you are about the business of keeping us today. Yeah. And Father, we say that we are going to be kept. God, I will be kept by you today. God, I will walk with you fully into the land of yeah. promise. Yes. Father, I pray that over my friends as well, God, that they would walk with you being kept by your grace. 
and walking in full, fully into the land of promise, God, knowing that your um, knowing that your hand is with us, yeah. knowing that you're working for us, yeah. knowing that um, our good is found in your glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that today my good is found hidden inside of your glory. Lord, let that paradigm change our lives. Yes. God, I pray that our good would be found and rooted. God, that we would search out our good inside of the, the, the glory of your presence yes. today in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Father, help us not to be people who believe <coughs> the worst of you, Father God, that that, uh, that believe you're just a cosmic cop waiting up there to, to, to hand us a ticket. But, Father, that you deeply care about us. Father, help us to have a revelation of how much you love us and how much you desire <laughs> to bring about the fullness of uh, your being in us, your, your Christ within us, Father, that we would truly be conquerors, that we would be the victors and not the victims, the yep. champs and yes. not the chumps. Lord, that we would, we would ultimately be yep. the head and not the tail, that you have placed us, God, in a position to win. A position of victory and so father we just we revel in your goodness lord we revel in your goodness in that case uh, in that case in the name yes. of jesus amen donna said do you believe in duplicity of yourself and others i believe that there is a place where you can come where you're where you have not put to death or you have not put the the uh, misdeeds of your own soulishness, the mind, will, and the emotions, and the spirit within you um, wants to take, wants to um, rise up in um, uh, not gratifying. I guess gratifying could be a way to say it. gratifying the will of God, mm -hmm. gratifying the the presence of God, grat you know, uh, gratifying the pleasures of God within our lives. But there's a place um, in our lives also where we have to will, we have to volitionally, emotionally, and um, um, uh, mentally take authority uh, over uh, ourself in the natural. And so I don't know that I believe in a duplicity. I, I think um, um, all... I'm, I'm going to say this, and it, if you need clarification, it's okay. But every lack of unity um, can be pointed directly to the answer found in the presence of God. Every la wholeness, unity in yourself, your, your soul. And we've talked about this at Masterwork, how our soul needs to come under the authority of our spirit. Yeah. Our soul and our spirit should work not in um unity is not the right word i guess um i guess alignment would be the alignment word. yeah correct correct authority every bit of every bit of alignment uh issues can be uh answered with the presence of god so there uh i was just looking up the definition of duplicity wow uh, duplicity ultimately means deceitfulness or double dealing um doubleness <laughs> so there, there there is this concept there is this concept that ultimately i think the church has struggled with for years that uh, inside of us there's a good wolf and a bad wolf right this was uh chief sitting bull i believe was the one who originally said this to to uh to us uh foreign westerners um um easterners for them um the uh he said there's a good wolf and a bad wolf and ultimately the one that you that you feed grows um as to where i believe that there is some truth to that there is not all when you were saved ultimately you were redeemed yes the the whole you the were whole, redeemed. yeah the whole man the, the paul says <clears throat> it so many times in the scriptures the flesh was dead at that juncture your flesh died and your your spirit was brought alive if that is true then we are still understanding, we are still in the in the progressive understanding of what it means to live by the Spirit. Because it's it's like kids that go through adolescence. They, they, a change has happened, but they are still struggling to, to figure out exactly what it means that the change has happened. And you can get so into your mind, will, and emotions, your, your soul, 
that what you wind up doing is wasting the opportunity okay. of the of the spirit that's been brought alive. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was, I was saying the right thing. Um, <clears throat> just like an, <clears throat> Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. When the dude says, hey, I want to follow you, just let me go. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, what you feed in, in within you will grow. But just when, when he said, he comes to Jesus and says, just let me bury my dead relatives. Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. In the same way that a necromant, the, a necromancer. Necromancer can, is a person <coughs> who practices witchcraft who brings people back from the dead. Sorry. Just like definition. A, yeah. Just like a necromancer deals in dead things. So we deal in dead things when we keep poking at the old ways, when we keep poking at unrighteous living. When it's dead. It's buried. It's dead. Leave it alone. Let the dead, those, those are dead and gone. Jesus uh, gave us the law in the Old Testament, and he said, don't touch dead things. And that was just to get us ready yeah. so that when Jesus came to give us grace over the dead, over the dead areas in our life and to resurrect them with the resurrection power of, uh, that he that he snatched from death hell and the grave that we now have the ability and the authority and the obligation i'm gonna tell uh, because a lot of pastors will say we have the ability and the authority but they don't tell us that as disciples of jesus we have the obligation to <clears throat> to stop touching the dead things so that means stop Stop going to the place where my mouth just gets out of control. Stop going to the place where you just, um, well, I just, um, I don't like saying the hard things where you just overeat because, well, it was just so good. And so I just overate and I made myself sick and oh, David's laughing at Stepping me. on my toes, woman. And, and stop, stop going to the place where I just willfully, volitionally sinned. But Jesus is going to forgive me. That is dead. That is dead. And it makes us, anything I wanted to and it makes us <laughs> unclean. And so. Okay. Let, 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 let me say it this way. Every gospel, I mean, every, uh, every New Testament writer to a man says, gives a very clear defining line when you lived by the flesh yes you were dead dead when you when your spirit came alive in christ you no longer lived by the flesh you now live by the spirit and so i would say to you people of god you now live by the spirit so you don't have to live dead don't get caught in the space of your mind your will and emotions yearning after the dead thing another thing that david said a couple of weeks ago at masterwork is this we look at the one tree in the garden that we shouldn't eat from and we're like we can't have everything but realize that every other tree in the garden is ours every other place except this one little tree in the middle <laughs> every other place is ours <coughs> except death amen Yes, and exactly, Donna, you're so right. Just because we ask forgiveness and receive it doesn't mean that we need to keep doing it, uh, both for the sin and Amen. for the forgiveness. The reality is you ask for forgiveness of a sin. The reality is your your forgiveness was bought by the blood, past, present, and future, okay? The Lord knows. The Lord knew you were going to sin, okay? But we don't have to live in that sin. We don't have sinning and the lord says uh, and jesus shows us it is possible he was a man tempted in every way he was hurt he had trauma the the uh, in every way possible I'm gonna go have that. yeah well yeah we're, we're finishing <laughs> in every way possible uh the the lord the lord was a man um but he was also 
uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, which shows us what is possible. All right, good. My first insight when I first believed. That's that's exactly it. Yes, when you first believed, man, you were ready. The, the, the Spirit was willing and able. Sometimes we get caught in that soulishness who desires the soul, desires all the stuff that the flesh had at, at one point, your mind, your will, and emotions, right? And, and uh, 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 Paul tells us several times, I don't do what I want to do. And I, but he's talking there about, uh, about being concerned with flesh things. Don't be concerned with flesh things. All right, we've talked too much. Love you guys. Have a great uh, Tuesday. We'll see you back here at Story of God tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. Bye, everybody.